election is being called and BC is still voting. I feel uh, bad when I see that. You do feel bad, right? I mean, it, it's it's a strange thing. I'm relieved, as you know, uh, the what Harper is out, but I'm torn. Uh, we need to feel our vote matters, as the mm. government is called. You know, we talk a lot about voter engagement. How do we get people to really care about about the electoral process? It's hard to it's hard to feel that way uh, when it's already over before you mm. even get to the ballot box. And then finally, uh, Western Canada polls aren't closed, and they've called the Canadian election. It makes BC voters feel pretty uh, unimportant. So sad trombone there, uh, not feeling great about herself. Uh, and for the province, and it used to be, of course, you couldn't report until all the polls were closed, and you know everybody felt like it was a little more inclusive. This you is the first make time. An argument for that. You can make an argument for that. This is the first time we've been in this situation where it's actually over, and uh, people are still going to the polls. We're almost an awkwardly large country with all these time zones <laughs> and we're watching everything that's happening happening online and one of the things not just the baseball one of the things that's just happening is the Star Wars trailer that's hit <laughs> so Donna I'm actually probably going to take a little break and let the 13 year old in me um, watch this trailer I may tear up a little bit so thanks for doing all the heavy lifting. Wow yeah wow. you need a little break you just yeah, carry thanks. on there. Relax. All right, Mike Armstrong, thanks. And we wanted to show you uh, Stephen Harper's riding just to confirm what's happening with him. He has been declared elected in his riding of Calgary Heritage, which is no surprise, uh, though he is not going to be prime minister anymore. Let's bring in our panel. Um, yeah. Goldie, is this a failure of the uh, of the Tory campaign or a success of the Liberal one, or how do you? Well, a little bit that? of both, to be to be honest. I think the Tory campaign um, got off message when we, we stopped talking about the economy. The party started talking about the economy. It, it variated into places where people were, I think, in many cases, wondering, "You're no longer speaking to the things that I care about." It was available to them. That long campaign created events like Syria, uh, like this this debate around the niqab, which I consider to be a false debate. It was unnecessary. Necessary. Focus on the on the economy. Having said that, you contrast that with Justin Trudeau in a very positive campaign. All right, Goldie Hyder and our, our strategist panel will be back with more in a moment. Stay with us. You're watching Decision Canada on Global. I'm back. Wendy's bacon portobello mushroom melt. Did you miss me? The bacon, the rich portobellas and cheese. Very clear the NDP was not going to have a chance to, to win. The Conservatives very quickly lost their chance for a majority. And then the Liberals finally were the only ones left as we calculated the, the ridings in which all the parties had a chance. Only the Liberals were left with a chance to get to a majority. And finally we concluded that they could get a majority government. And that was the end of that want to show you one riding of some interest. It is Peterborough. Peterborough Kawartha. Now this of course is where the uh, where Dean Del Maestro, the disgraced MP for the Conservatives, um, did not run again for re-election. But Peterborough Kawartha is mostly the old Peterborough riding. It is a bellwether. This riding, ever since 1962, has gone with the government with one small exception in 1979. And once again, the P Peterboroughians have done it. Miriam Monsef. Coming out of that, we just now want to talk to you about a little bit about another record we could be seeing uh, kind of met here uh, out in Alberta. And here is Alberta for us right now. This looks like the usual Alberta we're, we're accustomed to, but if we go down into Calgary, there's a little something new happening. A couple of ridings possibly going for the Liberals. The Liberals have not run a, won a riding in, in Calgary since 1968. Guess who was the Prime Minister then, winning his first majority? Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Now it's Justin Trudeau. Let's look at one of those ridings in Calgary just to give you a sense of it. Calgary Confederation, that is lawyer Matt Grant. He has a six percentage point lead on the Conservative right now. So the Liberals could take some ridings even in Calgary. They haven't done anything like that in about almost 50 years. Donna. You are full of statistics. Thank you. Yeah. So landslide, Eric Sorensen says so. Liberal landslide. Landslide we'll take. Eric. Yeah. And landslide, Eric. He's, he is covering all of Canada, so he should know about landslides. We should take a look, Donna, at the, uh, at the gains and losses to give sort of a bigger picture for everybody on the country. And I think we've got a board that will do that. There you can see what's really happened so far tonight. Liberals have gained 147 conservatives, lost 60. The biggest loss going to the NDP, and we'll have to talk about that low NDP number. But let's take a look now at the popular vote in the country. And uh, there is, I can tell you, there was no pollster out there who saw 44% 
for the Liberal Party compared to 30% for the Conservatives. That's a 14-point gain. And I don't think anybody had the NDP, or very few people had them down around 18%. So if that popular vote holds, and it could change as the evening goes on, as the votes are all tallied up, but as of right now, that's a pretty extraordinary number and leads into the whole landslide Eric uh, motif. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Tories keep saying that, uh, well, it was so hard, and we're just looking at the Liberal headquarters right now, Justin Trudeau's headquarters. It was so hard for anyone to win a fourth term. Uh, incredibly difficult, incredibly rare. That's all true. So why did Stephen Harper even try, Jay? Well, I think Stephen Harper's a fighter, and I think the, he believed that he did have a, had, had laid the, the groundwork for another mandate. And I think that he went out there and, and tried to convince Canadians that uh, the economy is strong, uh, strongest probably in the G7, and that uh, he was a good manager of the, uh, of the Canadian economy and protecting their jobs. And, and he was hoping that would be the ballot question, and it didn't turn out it to be. It wasn't the ballot uh, question. Jay, Jay Change I, was, right? I just want to point out something about another Tory who has lost tonight, Chris Alexander has yeah. lost in his riding. He was in a very tight race there, and it is confirmed that uh, that is part of the Liberal surge as well. Mark Holland elected in Ajax. I, I disagree with uh, Jay on with this one thing about the length of the election campaign. I think, and I've been getting a lot of emails tonight on this, that it helped define Justin Trudeau the length of the campaign. A 35-day 37-day campaign may not have been enough to for Justin Trudeau because there were still all of those doubts out there of where my vote, center-left vote, is going to go. And he was able to do that. And, but uh, It'll also, be an interesting discussion, though, Jim, as this goes on, as to whether a fixed election date is actually a good idea because it yeah. means that we are going to forever have these enormously long campaigns. Yeah. And while it may have benefited costly. Justin Trudeau this time, <laughs> it's going to make yeah. could work could against him next time. Yeah. But back to the question of should... Stephen Harper have even gone for this yeah. round again. What do you think? Well, look, first of all, Stephen Harper is a historian. I think he knows his history on this, and the reason he ran is he knows that he can probably leave this party with a base, which he's managed to do tonight, of at least 30%, which did not happen if you look back at Trudeau-Turner transition, Campbell-Moroni transition, martin Chretien transition. All of those were prime ministers that were there for a period of time. When they left and they transitioned to a new leader, Canadians said, I don't care if you changed your leader. I want change en masse. Tonight, what they're saying is, yeah, I want change, but I've still got a Conservative Party that's in opposition that's ready in case you misbehave, we'll be ready in the next election. The I, I think he did the right thing by running, and I know that's a contrarian. I want to ask question, though, as well as a majority in the, in the Senate. He not only has 100 or 99 here, he has 47 Conservative senators. Let's see what they're going to be, do in this majority situation. I want to go hear from someone in Montreal, the man who was running the NDP campaign, the orange wave that was crushed tonight, I think it's fair to say. Mike Lecatur is at Tom Mulcair's headquarters. He has Brad Levine with him. Mike. Yeah, Brad Levine with me. 